nonsense. It is impossible. If you haven't seen that video, click up there. And if you have already seen it, and you want to know how to be able to make videos just like this one, let's go back in time and I'll show you. What's going on guys? It is finally happening. I'm going ahead and breaking down how I make a video start to finish so you can see the entire process. This is my process, but take the best part to this and just discard the worst things because some stuff may work for you and some won't. It all just starts here, literally in the comfort of this couch. Mark is over there playing Fortnite a little bit. It's not as professional as you may think. So the majority of the time, anytime I get an idea, I will actually just write it down in my notes. It doesn't even matter if it's just one single shot or one single concept because I can come back to it later. So as you can see here, I do have some stuff blurred out. I write down all the stuff that has been completed and what stuff I'm continuously working on. Hey Marcus, when did I, when did I get this idea, man? My man was just sitting over there. Like an hour later, he's like, all right, I got it. I'm like, what? He's like, I got a storyboard done. I'm like, all right, bet. <laughs> <laughs> or I was actually taking a shower. The best idea is you come wearing the shower, right? And I came out and I was just like, Marcus, I got it. I just was thinking about why people don't succeed and thinking about how am I supposed to stand out? Okay. Whenever the market is so saturated, I started writing down all of these like potential titles just because if I need to say something in the video, it doesn't matter because you will never get up and go get it. Or if I need to shoot something in the video, I need to know it for the thumbnail. I need to know what I'm going to tag it as. I need to know these things beforehand because if not, you can make a whole video and the video will not say anything about what the title says. I have all these different titles, started with like, why you don't wanna start a YouTube channel, because I'm trying to find out which ones be the best and look up different keywords, see what's going to hit better. The next thing I do is I want a message. You should always walk away with something. If I was to say one phrase, that should be able to trigger everything that you just learned from a video. And I think about a quote. That's why you see at the end of every single one of my videos, I have a quote, because that's really where I start off with, because that's what I'm trying to attack. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. When this idea came to me, I knew that I didn't want to do some cliche thing. I didn't want to do something that was in your face motivational because at the end of the day, it is motivational. However, it is for the people that really want it. So this is a really good way to filter out those people. I like to discourage certain people to see what they will do. The successful people, they will actually take this as fuel and go for it. And then people that aren't going to make it anyway will see this as a wall and just say, oh, well, he's right, I guess that's it. So. That's really what I wanted to do. So I write down just like a rough idea of kind of what I want. I don't know exactly how it's going to be. I don't write down all these individual shots. All I write down is just, oh, well, I want it to be like this. I want it to have a voiceover. And I kind of think about what it is that I want. Are people going to be talking? I think about these things so that whenever I go to shoot it, I know exactly what I'm getting into. And then the next thing I do is I write out the concepts that I really want to hit. For example, I knew that I wanted to show that the phone was going to open up at the very beginning because your phone is your gateway to what people say, to what people share, to all these things that will really just discourage you and tell you, hey man, you're not good enough. Really wanted to have the voiceover start at that very moment. Let's be up front, you don't want it. Remember, I haven't filmed any of this, so hopefully this makes it into the final edit. You're literally going in the process with me. The next thing is this. I knew that I needed the story, exactly what was going to happen. So in this case, it was the voiceover. So I started writing the voiceover. This part is kind of difficult to really explain or to tell you how to do it because I just like words, doing a lot of public speaking. So for me, just being able to write stuff is actually very simple for me. I don't say it from a cocky place. I really say it as like, I have been working on this for a long time. So I remember when time stood still, where it wasn't about getting your life's fill. If it doesn't come out like you want it to, don't get discouraged, write it out what you want. You don't have to put all the details, just give yourself a rough outline because when you get out there, it's probably going to change. Because even though the voiceover is separate from the video, I still want to put little points in there to where like whenever I'm speaking, you see certain things. So if I said something like, speaking truth and it's about to hurt, so strap yourself in. So it's those little things like that that are just like little nuggets of information that are just kind of cool. So, uh, write the voiceover. So the next thing is this, I need to find out exactly what I need. So the location, I already got it. Am I going to need actors, a videographer, lights, it doesn't matter. This is gonna be a run and gun shoot because we ain't got time to be outside. We can't like block off the LA streets and be like, hey man, we're about to do this shoot. We just gotta do it gorilla style, you know what I mean? Gorilla! So here's the thing. 
I know that in the story, I want to tell the voiceover, but I also want to be in the video. I want it to be cinematic. So how am I supposed to do that? Let's make a quick call. Hey bro, what's up man? You told me to hit you up when I'm in LA, so uh... Yup, that was a total dramatization. Did you catch it? <laughs> so I met Mitch back at VidCon. He has some great colors, he's a great photographer, and he's just gonna help me out with this footage. So, I'm taking care of on the filmmaking side. Now I just got to uh, make sure that my acting skills are up to par. <laughs> I am worried about how we're going to do the cloning thing at golden hour outside because that means I have to change either really, really fast or the lighting is going to be really, really messed up because I know we need a wide, I know we need a close up and I know we need both of us in the shot. I have no idea how that's going to work. So as you can see at the very beginning, this stuff is actually pretty freaking boring. All the shots that you see of people behind the cameras and getting all the cool shots and everything like that, that is not where the majority of the work goes. The majority of the work is just me sitting here just writing it all down. In between the voiceover, I write down a storyboard or a description of what exactly it is that I want, and I put them in at certain spots so that when we get out there, we can just go ahead and film the shots that we need and then call it a day. Because you can have this really bad tendency to actually film way more than necessary, and you don't even use it, and we're out there for so long, and you don't even use the clips, and that's, that's kind of a waste of time. All right, cool. I hate to be a broken record player, but audio is the most important thing in this thing. It, the most important thing in this thing. Yeah, that was freaking great. It, all we have is just some b-roll of me as well as some voiceover and that is it. So the most important thing here is the music. It needs to be perfect. Now this is the part where it's really tough for me to choose something because from the very beginning I don't want you to know that it's a motivational thing. I want to discourage you. So I can't have it be all happy. So if I type it in and I look for happy or inspiring, it starts off and it sounds like this. Yeah, dude, I don't want it to sound like that. That tells everybody that it's going to be an encouraging thing. And I want to catch you by surprise. I don't want to show you the reveal at the very beginning. So I need something that's going to start off kind of soft and smooth. I need it to build up and then eventually get to a climax of a really big peak. I need it to break and then I need it to keep going. Now I'm going to be honest with you. I wish that I could actually record my own music because I know exactly what kind of feel. I want it to be minor here. I want it to end on a major here. I know what I want but it would take me like three or four times as long just to come out with the video. So, I still haven't found the song yet, and uh, this is going to be challenging. This is the final thing that I wanna say. Make sure that everything that is going on is done on purpose. I know I say it all the time and it's freaking annoying, but it makes all the difference. Why is it that all these Easter eggs in like Avengers movies and stuff like that is so popular? It's because they take so much time for the stuff that you're not even supposed to be looking at to make a point and to do it on purpose. You will notice a couple of these Easter eggs, but they're not Easter eggs, it's just good filmmaking. Notice that the entire video is making this parallel between going for your goals against everything that you have speaking to you, and it's about going to the very top and just throwing yourself into it. So remember that just as important as audio is with what you're hearing, what you're seeing is also important. So imagine when you bring those two things together, you get yourself a banger, baby. Banger after banger after banger. That's enough, bro. Got it. So there's about an hour left until Mitch shows up, then we're going to eat, and then we're gonna shoot and stuff. So I gotta pack up all this stuff and get ready to go. However, it's gonna be kind of weird because I haven't had anybody else be behind the camera while I'm on it, and it has to be cinematic and it's just gonna be interesting. I, I like control, bro, lay off. But anyway, let's get it in. All right, so here we are. This is my boy Mitch Yo, over what's here. Going on, guys? Anyway, we're out here. We're gonna go ahead and get some food first. I'm breaking down kind of like my creative vision so you can kind of get an idea. Always remember this. Anytime you're shooting with somebody, you want everybody to be on the same page because if we're not on the same page, then yeah, it's, it's gonna be really bad. All right, so we're out here. We're just getting set up. What you're about to see, or actually all the video clips that you're gonna see for the most part, they're coming out of GH5. The 10 big color space is going to be insane. What we're gonna get out of there is gonna be able to mess with it. He's gonna be doing, for the most part, handheld. Anything else is gonna be done on the Ronin. We'll just, we'll just kind of move it around depending on uh, whatever shots that we need. But there is one specific shot, the one that went like this. Yeah, that one, most likely, we're gonna go ahead and uh, stick it on the Ronin and then a couple of tracking shots kind of thing. So we'll see how it goes. So we're recording this part where I'm running up the stairs or whatever. And then like, I feel really bad because I'm typically one behind camera. You'd think I would know what to do. Like, hey, I gotta pull focus first, but apparently I don't. So yeah. Ready? All right, bro. We got that shot going up the stairs, little laces or whatever. 
And so the next thing that we got now, we're starting from the beginning. Whenever you're doing like B-roll sequences like this, it's actually really good to shoot in order because you remember what position, what was coming from where. So earlier, if you saw whenever like the camera pulled up, you remember, I gotta do that on the next shot, you know what I mean? Where do you wanna do it? Uh, you just walk across the street. So uh, originally we wanted to hit a golden hour for the rooftop shot, for the ending shot, but uh, that's not happening because we're, uh, we're running low on time right now. Give yourself a rough outline because when you get out there, it's probably going to change. But we're about to hit up the rooftop. Um, it's gonna be a little bit sketchy just because we actually have to film in the dark and I was gonna do a mask with the clone and stuff, so that's kinda hard to do when it's dark. So, uh, about to find out what exactly happens on this one. Oh, oh my so. god, I am so sorry, I suck. Shut up! So, uh, future Joseph here, um, I actually did not get enough footage. For the most part, everything was shot in 24 frames, and I'm used to having things 120 frames, so pretty much I could just extend some- Oh, right. Sponsor me. So typically I could actually just extend the scene a lot longer just because I have those frames to work with, but in this case, I didn't. And because I didn't have enough footage, I couldn't show the true passing of time like I wanted to from day to night. He had a point. I had the same problem. Don't worry, Alfalfa. I used to have the same problem. So prepare to dive into something that I shouldn't be showing you. First, the stair scene. I actually had only these few clips. Whoa! You good? <laughs> you good? <laughs> However, you probably didn't notice it because I did some horizontal flips, I moved them in different directions, I had them at different speeds. Next thing, remember, during the day I needed to be walking and during night I needed to be running. I didn't have enough footage. So a couple of times, in this case, I actually had to grab the same clip and then just flip it the opposite way so that your brain gets mixed up and thinks that it's a different clip. You didn't catch it, did you? And also, I had to use some city B-roll that I was only going to use at the beginning to use it in between because I did not have enough footage. So just do your best. Even with me, with all of this planning that I did, I still couldn't hit it right on target. So if you mess up, don't worry about it. It happens to all of us. Just keep it going. All right, back to the video. Dude, I'll be honest, this thing is sick, man. And just the 10-bit, I'm just looking at in camera and I'm just like, dude, I'll probably be able to edit this like if I'm editing a picture. You gotta enjoy the little things. All right, so we're in this little tiny elevator. So we're on our way to this rooftop. Is it gonna be dope? Oh uh, yeah. Hi, doggy. How's it going? You wanna be in the shoot? Hey man, we can get the stair shots here. So here we are. And check out the view. That's fire, bro. All right, so. We're about to get this shot. Hopefully we don't get caught by the cops. Don't hit me, my guy. <laughs> that drone got so close to my face. I was so scared. We're about to go ahead and shoot the ending shot. We're probably gonna cheat it. So like I'm standing up there and we wanna keep that consistency. So since we have these tables, we're probably gonna shoot some shots with me on the table, but you're not gonna know that I'm on the table. As I, you wouldn't have known if you actually had told you. But we're pretty much done. Uh, Mitch is just grabbing uh, some more drone shots right now. It is at Mitch Forte, but feel free to go check him out. He has some great stuff. And I told him whenever he goes back to OKC, I'll drop a banger on him. Just show him what Sony's really made of, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully this helped you out. You got a better idea on how like the story goes and how it breaks down and all that kind of stuff. As far as the shooting was concerned, I know it didn't really touch much on it just because we didn't have enough time. As long as you got your shot list set up and you're just, you know, going off of that, it, it should do the job. Catch you on the flip side.